With the third generation Mercedes Sprinter, the Stuttgart brand has thought again about the sort of vehicle a large van should be. It's as practical, well-built and efficient as you could want it to be, but the real change here is class-leading connectivity that can change the way your business fleet could work. In short, it sets a fresh standard. On the move in this Sprinter, we think that two things might initially strike you. The first of these is ride quality, which in our view is class leading, and it's actually better than quite a few family cars we've driven. The other thing that we think you'll notice is just how light the new electrically assisted power steering system feels. It's a speed sensitive setup that's tuned to be finger light at low speeds before waiting up as you go faster. Out on the highway, refinement's impressive, even though the engine is much the same 2.1 litre four cylinder diesel unit that Mercedes used in the previous generation version of this model. It's available in 114, 143, and 160 PHP states of tune, or you can have a 3 litre V6 diesel with 190 HP. With this third generation version, buyers are being offered a range of front driven models for the first time. As before, there are also rear wheel drive and all wheel drive options too. Front driven variants can be had with the new 9G Tronic automatic gearbox. Uh, with the other drive formats, the auto option is the 7G Tronic transmission that we're trying here. Efficiency, while well, that's reasonable by class standards, the 316 CDI 163 HP rear driven auto variant we're trying here manages 36.2 mpg on the combined cycle and 203 grams per kilometer of CO2. The Mark III Sprinter has evolved into a much more mature looking large van and it remains as always a classically conservative LCV design. As usual with a commercial vehicle, the main changes are at the front. Uh, the usual bold grille with its prominent three-pointed star, that's now flanked by more slender restyle headlights that this time around can feature full LED beams and a so-called eagle wing daytime running light design. Inside, it's all very different from the slab-sided dashboard of the previous generation Sprinter, with a sleek, rounded design and higher quality plastics than you'll find in rival models. Uh, the driving position is commanding, the driving seat is very comfortable, there's lots of cabin storage, and there are some really lovely, classy touches, like these stylized air vents. The key improvement here, though, is this MBUX, or Mercedes-Benz User Experience Infotainment System, uh, which includes 4G Wi-Fi internet connectivity, and it comes as standard uh, either with a 7 inch center dash color monitor or with an optional uh, 10.25 inch display. A really clever real speech voice control system allows you to tell the setup exactly what you want it to do. That's similar in the way that you can work Siri on an iPhone or Google Assistant on an Android handset. So which Sprinter will you need? A front-driven model will be a bit cheaper to buy, and in comparison to the rear-driven variant, it offers a 50 kilo payload increase, 0.5 cubic meters more load space, and an 80 millimeter lower loading height. These advantages mainly brought about because of a more compact transmission package. Rear-driven and all-wheel driven models are the ones that you'll require for the more powerful engines and for the higher gross vehicle weight options. And they uh, remain better suited to the heaviest loads because they offer increased traction. As for body shapes, well, uh, buyers get four wheelbase length options, the 5.27 meter L1 version, the 5.93 meter L2 variant, and the 6.97 meter L3 derivative that we've got here. Plus there's an even lengthier 7.37 meter L4 extra long model if you want that. There are also three roof height choices, starting with the 2.36 meter H1 standard roof version. That slots in below this 2.62 meter H2 variant. That's the one that most will want. And the 2.83 meter H3 super high roof option for those who really want to supersize things. All of that means that a Sprinter can be specified in load volumes that vary between the short length standard roof L1 H1 models, 7.8 cubic meters, to a truly cavernous 17 cubic meters if you were gonna go for the very biggest L4 H3 Sprinter version. Uh, you want to know about your gross vehicle weight options across the Sprinter range. Things kick off with the two series models. They're only available with front wheel drive and they have a gross vehicle weight of three tons, but you'd probably be better off with a 3.5 ton three series model like this one. Uh, for businesses shifting seriously solid loads, the four ton model designation start four and the five tonners only available with rear wheel drive start with a numeral badge of five. Payload capacities begin at not much more than 800 kilos at the bottom of the lineup, but they can range up to 3,000 kilos at the top of the range. Now, if towing's a priority, then your ideal pick will be one of the all-wheel drive models. 
This sprinter has made it its business to set new standards over the years. It offers the classiest interior, the most sophisticated infotainment provision, the smoothest automatic transmission and the widest range of available variants. Premium pricing is compensated for by premium residual values and if funds permit, you can make a Sprinter feel more luxurious than any other LCV on the market. All of which means that whatever your business happens to need, this could be your right-hand van. Some things just don't change.